Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video lecture, we'll be solving this problem frog position after t seconds. So in this problem, we have an undirected tree which consists of n vertices numbered from 1 to n. So we have a frog here which starts jumping from vertex 1. In one second, a frog jumps from its current vertex to another unvisited vertex if they are directly connected. So there must be a direct edge from the current vertex to another vertex for the frog to jump from the current vertex to the neighbor vertex. The frog cannot jump back to a visited vertex. In case the frog can jump to several vertices, that is, we are standing on a node and there are more than one nodes which are connected by a direct edge to this node. In that case, it jumps randomly to one of them with the same probability. So the probability to move to any of the of those vertices is same. Otherwise, when the frog cannot jump to any unvisited vertex, this is a case when we have a leaf node. It jumps forever on the same vertex. Okay. Now, what we are given in this problem, we are given an edges array. An edges array is basically an array of pairs where each pair represents a two directional edge between those pair of integers or nodes. So what do we have to do in this problem? In this problem, we have to return the probability after t seconds. So we are given integer t that the frog is on the vertex target. So we are also given a target vertex. So we start from the root vertex, which is vertex number one. We want to reach vertex target. We just want to return the probability after t seconds that the frog is on the vertex target. Fine, that's what we have to return in this problem. Answers within 10 raised to the power minus 5 of the actual answer will be accepted. So this is the precision for which the answers will be accepted. So in the input will be given n representing the number of nodes, edges array representing the bidirectional edges in the given nodes, t which is the time to move from the node number 1 to the target node and the target node. While in the output we have to return a double number which basically represents the probability to reach the target starting from the node number 1. Fine. So and let's see the constraints for the problem. The number of nodes may go up to 100 while the edges must be n minus 1 because it is a tree. We know that for a tree, we know that for a tree having n nodes, the number of edges are n minus 1 and the nodes are numbered from 1 to n while the time, the time variable may go up to 50 units and obviously the target must be one of the nodes from 1 to n. So let's better understand the problem statement using an example. So I'm starting at vertex number 1. I want to go down the tree while making jumps. So whenever I make a jump, there is a certain probability to move to the neighbor node. Fine. So initially, right at the position where I'm standing, the probability is 1. Let's call it P. It is 1 here or 1.0. Fine. And this is also, this can also be one of the base cases. Like think about when we have exactly one node in the tree. In that case, the probability is always 1.0. Fine. Then we have to move to one of the neighbor nodes. Either I move to 2 or I move to 7 or I move to 3. So there are three choices to move down. Each choice holds a certain probability. The, that probability is calculated by dividing the number of that the node has. So for node number one, we have three child. So I so I basically calculate. So I basic the probability would be one by three. The probability to move to node seven would, would, would also be one by three. Same goes for node number three. So let's say I jump to node number two. So that's what I'm doing. I, tra I have traversed node number one. I jump to node number two, and the probability variable has become one by three. Then again. Here I have two choices. So I calculate the number of nodes and I calculate the probability to jump to the neighbor node. That would be 1 by 2. Similarly, 1 by 2 is the probability to move to node number 6. So from node number 2, I jump to left child, which is this node number 4. And the probability becomes 1 by 3 multiplied by 1 by 2 for this path that we have taken. And this would give me 1 by 6. At this point, we have our target node. We have reached the target node and this is a leaf node as well. So here I check what is the remaining time that I have. Since I had made two jumps, so I keep a parameter, a copy para a copy of the variable t, which is 2 initially, 
it becomes 1 at this node, it becomes 0 at this. Since t has become 0 and this is our target node, the probability would be 1 by 6. That means I can reach node number 4 within the given time constraint. So I return this probability. Okay, so let's try to understand the intuition to solve this problem. So in this problem, we are given this graph which has 7 nodes numbered from 1 to 7. The frog is standing at node number 1 and we want to reach the node number 4 which is the target node within the time which is 2 seconds. So all we have to do is to find the probability to reach node number 4 starting from vertex 1. If we cannot do so, then that means we cannot reach the target node. Hence, the probability would be zero in that case. So how can I solve this problem? How to think about it? the very first observation is, is that the given data structure is a tree data structure. So we know that for a tree having n nodes, we can have n minus one. Edge. So what does that tell us? It simply means since we have n minus one edges, we have exactly one path between any two nodes. So take any two nodes of the given tree, let's take 6 and 3, there is exactly one path, that is this one. Take 7, 5, there is exactly one path, 7 to 1, 1 to 3, 3 to 5 and so on for every pair of nodes. That means from the source vertex 1 to the target vertex 4, there has to be exactly one path and all we have to do is to travel along that path, keep decrementing our time variable along that path and finally when we reach the target node check if t is positive or zero like if we have reached the target node within this time if it is the case then we just have to return the probability otherwise the probability is all is zero if we cannot reach within this t so that's all so that's our target now the challenge is to implement the idea idea which we have understood here so we know that there has to be exactly one path so and we want to return and we and we just keep track in mind that we want to return a probability we want to return the probability so standing at the source node we have two variables initially the probability variable so what would what would be the value of the probability variable it would be one because i'm standing at the node number one so to reach the node number one the probability is one Another variable which we have to keep track for every node is t and initially the t is 2 which is given as an argument to the function. So these two variables which will have which we have to keep track for every single node. Now we move down the given tree. Let's so first we jump to node number 2. How will these variables change? What will be the probability at node number 2? We know from we know that in the problem statement we're given that to jump to any of the neighbor nodes, the probability is uniformly divided. So since there are three child, one, two, three, the probability to jump to each node would be one by, three. it would be one by three for this, it would be one by three for this, it would be one by three. So I jump to node number three, the probability becomes one multiplied by one by three, that is one by three. We know that to jump from one node to another, we consume one unit of time, hence the time remaining at node number two is one second because we have consumed one second in jumping from node number one to node number two. so these are the two variables for this node now from node number two i can jump to two nodes which are node number four and node number six so what is the probability to jump to one of these nodes it would obviously be one by two. why because there is equal probability to move to any node to move to any neighbor node the probability is randomly divided or the next vertex to choose is randomly chosen. Hence the probability to jump to node number 4 is 1 by 2. So what will be these two variables for the node number 4? They would be 1 by 3 multiplied by 1 by 2 which will become 1 by 6 while the time will become 0. Since the time will has become 0 that means I have to check whether the node on which I am standing on which our frog is standing is the target node or not. If it is the target node, then that means I have consumed the time and I have reached the target node. So here I have to check I have arrived at the target node or not and we have arrived at the target node. So I return the probability from here. What is the answer? The answer is one by that is the probability to reach the node number four starting from node number one in two units of time. Fine. So that's the idea that so that's how we are going to solve this problem. So, so if you have 
basic idea of graph traversal algorithms or tree traversal algorithms like depth first search, BFS, etc. So you must be able to implement the solution which I explained here. It is just a traversal. All we have to do is to traverse down the tree while standing at any node, we must know the probability to jump to the next. This idea can be easily implemented using depth first. So before you move to my implementation, try to implement the solution by yourself because that would help you to better understand the problem and that will make your life easier to tackle these problems whenever they appear next. Let's jump to my implementation. Okay, so I implemented the solution using depth first strategy. So this is my target variable. This will store the target node. This is adjacency list which will be used to create the graph from the given edges. This is the visited array used to mark the nodes visited. So here in this function frog position where we are given the number of nodes in the graph, the edge list, the time and the target node. I resize my, resize my adjacency list and visited array for n nodes and then I iterate over the edges and create our graph. Then I call my depth first search function from the starting node 1 and time t. These are the two arguments which I am passing. While the target is a global variable, while the target is a global variable, I can simply check the base condition without passing in the argument. So let's see the working of this depth first search function in the next slide. So this is my depth first search function which takes in the node on which I am standing. So initially this node is 1 and the time which is remaining to reach the target. So this is the base condition. What, what is the base condition? The base condition is simple. So either the time has been consumed. So while moving down the tree, the time has been consumed. So at any node i, if the time becomes zero, that means we can't jump to any further node. In that case, all we left with is to check if the current node on which we are standing is equal to the target node. If it is the case, then I have to return 1 from here. Otherwise, I have to return 0 from here. In a general condition, I visit that node. I initialize a variable to 0. So what does this variable store? This variable is simply going to check if for any certain node on which I'm standing. So let's say node number i. So the this variable is either 0 or 1. Why? Because let's say I have three subtrees in this tree. Let's say I have these three subtrees for the node number i and let's say deep down in the very first subtree I have my target node as 4. Obviously we have exactly one target node in the given tree in which I am traversing. So here this is the current node. I will traverse all its I will traverse all of the subtrees which this node has. This subtree, this subtree and this final subtree. So this res, this res variable, so since this subtree contains node number 4, whenever I reach node number 4, this will return 1 because that is the base condition. Hence, this subtree is going to return 1 because I have the, because the target node is present in this subtree. While the target node is not present in these subtrees, this condition is never met. Since these trees do not contain the target node, this condition that is i is equal equals to target is never met. Whenever I reach a leaf node which is checked by this condition, I am sure that that leaf node is not the target node. So I am returning 0 right from here because the target node is present in this sub. So, so the DFS function is going to return 0 for these subtrees. Hence, hence the rest will store 1 plus 0 plus 0 that is 1. So after this, so after this loop ends, I will have res either 1 or 0. 1 is the case for those subtrees which contains our target node. So while here I am returning the probability. How do I calculate the probability? That is if for a particular subtree the target node is present then that is then in that case the res will be 1 and for that subtree all I have to do is to check for the number of childs which that subtree has and that can be calculated from the given adjacency list and here I have to check if the node on which I am standing is not the source node because because for any node let's say this I have to count the number of childs which this node has I have to exclude the parent or the node from which I am that's why I'm subtracting this variable from here so I will return the probability right from here. and this will be zero for all the subtrees which do not have the target node. fine so this is okay so so let's discuss the time and space complexity for the implementation explained 
here. The time complexity for the given implementation is same as the time complexity of depth first search, which is big of n, while the space complexity for the given implementation is big of 1 because we are not using any extra space while performing our depth first search. Although the stack space is consumed, but the auxiliary space is not used. Fine. So let's see the code implementation of the idea explained here. Okay, so this is a solution class where we have two functions depth for search function and a frog position function. The frog position function takes in the number of nodes, edge list, time, and target node and returns the probability to reach the target node while starting from the node number one. So let's declare the variables which will be used in the program. This is the target variable which stores the target node for the given tree. And then we have our adjacency list which will be used to store the graph. Then we have our visited array which will be used to mark the visitor nodes in the trees. Okay, so in this frog position function, we resize our adjacency list and visited array to n. Then we assign the target node to the global variable target. Then I prepare my graph from the given edge list. Finally, I call the DFS function from the starting node 1 and I pass in the argument time. So let's see the implementation of DFS function. So this is the base case in the DFS function. It simply says if we have reached a leave node or the time has exhausted. In that case, I have to check the node on which I'm standing if it is a, if it is a target node or not. If it is, then we return 1. Otherwise, we return 0 from here. Then I mark the current node as visited. Declare a variable result which and initialize it to 0. Then iterate over all the unvisited child nodes of the current node i. And for all those unvisited child nodes, recursively call this depth for search function and add the result to this variable. So this variable after code, after this iteration, it will either contain one or zero. It will contain one for all those subtrees rooted at node number i, which contains the target node. And for rest of the subtrees, it will, it will be zero. Finally, I have to return the probability to reach the target node from this node i. That will be computed by calculating by dividing the resultant variable by the number of childs that the current node has. So here I am excluding the node from which I have arrived at node number i or the parent node. So this condition is used to exclude the parent node from all the adjacent nodes of the current node. Fine. So this is the implementation in C++. Let's see the implementation in other languages. So this is the implementation in Java and this is the implementation in Python language. So that's all for this video. If you like the video, then hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I would love to take your feedback in the comments below. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.